Uh, welcome back to this lecture on the design of uh, power transmission shafts uh, and all of the components that go into it. So we're going to go into a, a little bit higher level where we want to put things together in a design perspective. As we mentioned, the objective of the course is to focus our understanding of design on one system and the system that we have selected is a system of power transmission shafting. It is prevalent in all kinds of applications. Uh, one of the applications that is uh, very common is in uh, automotive uh, industry. For example, if you look here at um, uh, a gearbox, and uh, you can see that the gearbox here is um, uh, designed so that it would have an engine uh, part and uh, the engine uh, has a drive shaft and the drive shaft uh, will be uh, transmitting power so the power is uh, contained in the drive shaft and then will be transmitted to uh, the rest of the powertrain and uh, what you can see here is that the transmission is through a system of gears and clutches. Uh, for example, uh, if you have the high, the largest gear, this is gear number one, uh, gives you high torque, then gear number uh, two, and then three and four and five and six. And then you have also the reverse. So it means that what we are interested in is the design of this particular shaft and how to uh, attach uh, the gear systems onto the shaft and how to design it for a number of constraints. Another example is a differential gear case and the differential gear case has the differential gears uh, in a triaxle uh, which is running across from the passenger side to the driver side. And you can see that the case has uh, is, the, is the end, uh, the support uh, housing uh, for the uh, for the shaft system and the gears and if you look at the gear assembly you can see that there's a number of gears that you can actually assemble and disassemble and you notice here that there are bearings that are attached to the gears and the bearings uh, through which uh, you actually uh, introduce the shaft and um, transmit the power so the power of the shaft has to be transmitting uh, to the gears and the gears will uh, will actually uh, uh, help or uh, uh, allow us to transmit the power from one part of the uh, of the automotive assembly to another so I left this uh, document for you to basically uh, give you a motivation of uh, the design of this assembly. You can see uh, in this picture that is the transaxle uh, of a car. So this is the reference passenger side case and this is the reference driver side case. And uh, these are all components that are attached to a shaft. So the shaft will be running through let's say from this side to this side, and uh, it goes through bearings, gears, and, um, and then differential gears or different kinds of gears for transmission of power, uh, and the same thing uh, for the remainder. Here you can see all of these uh, components that are associated with the transmission of power. So I want you to kind of have a look at uh, this document uh, so that you can uh, appreciate uh, the uh, uh, idea of uh, shaft design. In other words, we are not designing the shaft for uh, by itself just as a very simple object, but the shaft has to be designed to transmit power and therefore we have to design it with all of the uh, uh, accessories that are attached to it with all of the precision with all the requirements that we have therefore if you look here for the chapter we want to uh, uh, 
understand what shaft materials are, uh, how do we, if we're given a certain geometry and we know the source and, uh, and the flow of power, how to uh, lay out the shafts and uh, how to connect them together. Uh, and then we want to apply what we've learned in the previous chapters in two areas. One is shaft design for stress and the other one is for deflection. And uh, uh, one additional topic that we will discuss here we haven't learned before is uh, the critical speed of shaft because a lot of shafts can go under into vibrations and the vibrations uh, will introduce uh, unnecessarily uh, high stresses uh, in the system and these high stresses can amplify uh, in a way that they are dynamic stresses and therefore they can lead to premature failure. So in addition to these aspects of the shaft, namely uh, the layout, the geometry, the design, uh, the stress, uh, the deflection requirements, uh, we also have, and the vibration requirement, we also have to think about uh, the miscellaneous components that must be associated with the shaft uh, such as the gears, uh, the set screws, the splines, uh, the retaining rings, and so forth. So all of this uh, will be covered in this chapter. Uh, so if we look at the general problem of shaft design, we have to select material. We have to make a geometric layout because we are limited by the geometry in terms of sizes. We have to do analysis for stress and strength using static and fatigue, as we learned. We have to do analysis for uh, bending deflection, torsional deflection. And um, then we have to uh, look at uh, bearings and the shaft support elements, uh, as we mentioned, the uh, splines and the keys and the retaining rings and set screws and so forth. And um, then we need to look at shear deflection. Addition to that, if we have uh, concentrated forces, it can lead to transverse shear. And finally, the vibrations. So we have, if you can account uh, the areas of design, we have materials, we have geometry, we have stress, we have deflection, we have vibrations. So these are the five areas of shaft design that we are interested in. The materials, the commonly uh, used materials are low carbon steels um, or uh, other steels that are cold drawn or hot rolled um, such as the 10 uh, series, so 1020, 1050 steels. Uh, so uh, usually they take these steels and they do surface hardening um, uh, especially if it is used uh, close to a uh, bearing surface or the can do surface treatment like very precise machining uh, to reduce um, the level of uh, uh, the disturbances on the surface for inspection for uh, uh, small cracks or, or roughness so you can reduce the roughness at a decent cost and um, uh, generally the CD Steel is used for uh, diameters less than three inches and hot rolled for larger diameters. And uh, we're using, uh, we, we can produce them, machine them either by um, uh, forming or casting. And uh, then we do lathe machining and uh, finishing after this stage. Um, then the layout problem that we're considering is that we want to consider how we put shafts together. Suppose that the power is coming from one side, is going to flow and then it will be transmitted in a transverse direction, for example. Then how do you support shafts and how do you lay them out? So if you look at the uh, requirements for the layout, uh, the axial, lay we have to think about axial layout components. How do you, uh, support axial loads because there will be some axial forces uh, flowing into the shaft. How do you react those? Um, and then 
uh, more often than not, we are actually tr uh, transmitting power through by torque. Uh, so we need to provide for torque transmission. And um, then finally, assembly and uh, disassembly of, of the shaft system. So these requirements are necessary for us. And uh, you can see here that um, we're providing for the, the shaft layout, as you can see in here. Um, 